We are here with Lama Horani, who is the CEO and founder of Lama Horani Creations, a Jordanian jewellery designing company that has managed to expand and sell across the Gulf and into the Far East, and also the curator of Foresight Art Gallery in Jordan, which is a unique art space providing an outlet for Jordan's creative talent. Lama Horani, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so, I mean, you had a chance to look around. What, what do you think of the celebration of an entrepreneurship so far? It's um, a very interesting approach to uh, presenting new experiences and existing experiences. And it's fun and emotional and touching and inspiring. It's, it's, um, it crossed all barriers of the, you know, the traditional convention and like the stuff stuffy kind of attitude. Corporate and stiff, yeah. It's very relaxed, it's very open. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you started your business, what, 10 years ago now? 11. 11 years ago now. I mean, do you think your business would have benefited from something like this 10 years ago? You've seen the whole landscape change Absolutely. in entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Now it's like a trend, a movement, and um, I think people feel that there's no barriers or limits to what they can do and they can believe in themselves and just go for it, you know? And in, in, in Jordan, the Middle East, you've been an inspiration for a lot of people starting out their business, particularly in the creative field, particularly young women uh, in the Middle East wanted to start their business. But the start of your business has quite an interesting story. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Um, it started by chance. I studied art and I was supposed to be an artist, struggling artist maybe. And um, I finished art, um, I studied art and, and you know, I was working with my mom in her art gallery. Because your mom had an art gallery before. She had the first uh, private art gallery in Jordan, which, um, and so we have a, quite a, you know, legacy, artistic legacy. And uh, a guy wanted a job, he was a silversmith. And, you know, the bulk. And I was like, you know, let's give this a shot. I sat with him, I learned from him. We started in the gallery's kitchen. So you basically, a silversmith come to you and you started sketching out designs that he could make. And he taught me how to also produce my pieces and it was a very interesting process. I mean, we started with a very small collection and I did my first show and then it started from there. And you were young, you were fresh out of university. We're yes, talking 21, 22? I, was, I 22. was like a 20. month or two months graduate, you know? It's just like, Fantastic. I was fresh out of school. So how did you turn that initial idea or spark into a fully fledged business that started paying the bills, that gave him employment, sustainable employment, and, uh, and gave you a source of income? Well, I mean, I just took it very seriously. I presented it right and I was stubborn. You know, I, was, I wanted to set a standard and never go below. And I think that what helped me a lot. I set a certain quality or expectations in people that you know, when they come to see a show, they want something new, something innovative. They want me to reinvent myself. And I've managed to have, like, clients that lasted for the past 11 years, so. And you have some very prestigious clients, I know. Do you want to tell us about the, the, the women that have worn your jewelry around the world? <laughs> Not necessarily, but, you Not know, necessarily. they've helped with my image, so uh, that was important for me. Let's just say that royalty has been known to wear Lama's, uh, Lama's creations. Among um, a lot of uh, very important women that are... You know, maybe housewives or <laughs> established or dreamers or moms, you know, it's just, uh, it's not about who wears it, it's about who feels it and who communicates and interacts with it and what message it gives to the people. So it's, it's, it's art to wear, so it's not the normal luxury or lifestyle items that you would uh, seek and find everywhere. Okay, you've been able to expand into other markets. Can we talk a little bit about the business model that you have and how you've been able you know, what was the funding available to you? Was it family money? Was it credit? Was it uh, investments? How were you able to scale the company up? I started slowly and small, simply. And kind of hand to mouth almost, yeah? Exactly. Um, I would buy, you know, uh, components or raw materials, you know, to the point I need. I wouldn't uh, exaggerate and I would produce, you know, with my means at the, at the time and then the more purchase that uh, you know that the collection uh, developed, and uh, it's just started from there. It literally started from zero. So, how were you able? What was your first overseas market that you were present in, and how did you achieve that? Um, I think my biggest kind of leap was in the American history of natural history, uh, American Museum of Natural History. It was uh, you know. Um, 
moving exhibition or uh, a traveling exhibition about Petra. And this, that was the first like, kind of international exposure that I got. They got my jewelry as something linked to Petra and the heritage of Jordan. So it started from there and reorders came because of that and you know some recognition came out of that and it was very interesting. Okay, what would you say was a, a, being, a, being a Middle Eastern woman able to run your business from a very, very young age? What were the kind of challenges that you faced and were able to overcome? My biggest challenge at the beginning, my age. I mean, I was too young. People didn't take me so seriously at the beginning until I had like five exhibitions under my sleeve, you know? So, um, being a woman, it was kind of natural. I mean, the field I'm in is, is uh, you know, dominated by women and it's, it's uh, related or linked to women's uh, lifestyle and uh, liking, to say the least. So, it made sense, but, you know, being young was an obstacle for me, but, you know, now it's different. You the minute out. you leap above 30, it's fine now. It's you've, you've reached respect. You've, you've achieved respectability you and maturity now. Yeah. Um, you sort of began your business really kind of at the dawn of the internet in terms of a marketing tool in Jordan. How did you market your business early on? How did you reach the people you wanted to reach? It was word of mouth. Uh, you know, being out there, being curious, trying to be in part of events and stuff, and you know, giveaways. Actually, corporate gifts for companies helped me a lot because it gives you. You know, sort of liquidity for you to be able to be more artistic and gives you that space to, to create. You also you also have an art gallery, a successful art gallery, Foresight Art in, in, in Amman. How important is it that, that both Lamahorani Creations and the Foresight Gallery offer people in Jordan and beyond uh, the ability to express themselves creatively, that you can pass on your creative uh, inspiration to other people and nurture a new generation of Lamaharanis in the future? Well, um, ironically, or maybe naturally in our region, uh, jewelry makes more money than art. So, um, you know, I started in an art gallery. The art gallery pushed me, and now I'm pushing the art gallery. It's, it's uh, interesting. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's a connected process because I sell art to wear, and then we have different directions, like every kind of season we try to approach the young artistic uh, generation in a certain way that, you know, would boost their image and present them and it's a beautiful process. I mean, it's, uh, it's the fun and the, you know, the challenge, so. So you've recently celebrated your 10th anniversary. We had a big uh, gala opening of, uh, of your new gallery. What will the next 10 years bring? A lot of Lama Harani pieces all over the world, I guess. A lot of fun. And um, it's just, my main inspiration is the prehistoric art. So it's a language or a way of communication that connects the world. So it's not Jordanian. It is Jordanian in identity and it started in Jordan, but it's a way of communication and self-expression. Goes beyond religious and cultural and ethnic barriers. And that's all that matters. Lama Harani. Wish you all the success in the future. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you.